Hi, welcome to today's Sunday School online lesson. My name is Tumliko Muzumara. Our lesson for today is Living by Faith. First off, let's start with a prayer. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for bringing us to this wonderful day. Oh Lord, as we are learning, may you please grant us the understanding as we learn. Amen. Next off, we're going to have praise and fun time. Stay tuned. Hi boys and girls, welcome to Fun Time. Today we're making a caterpillar. You get a scissors, marker, and a piece of paper. So you fold the piece of paper. You cut it in the middle here. Then you cut it has then you cut like then you cut here. After you cut you are going to have two pieces. Then now, we fold the piece. You put this part here, like this. Then you fold it again. You come on top. You fold the piece up and fold it down. Then you cut this part. You open it. You have made a caterpillar. Then you put the eyes. And you can decorate it. There was a caterpillar named Bella. 
her cousins were butterflies. She wanted to be a butterfly. She believed in faith that she be as she become a butterfly. And she became a butterfly. Bye guys. I hope you enjoyed fun time with Walina C. Next off, we're going to have worship, then we'll have a memory base. My name is Baweme, and today's memory verse is coming from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Next up, we're going to have a lesson, quiz, then home assignment. Good morning, children. Uh, how are you, everyone? Uh, it's good to have you today. Today we have a very, very powerful lesson that we're going to look at. We're going to look at a lesson entitled Living the Life of Faith. Living the Life of Faith. So I'm sure all of you have heard about this topic of faith. People say I have faith in God. Others will say I don't have faith. People ask a question, do you believe in God or do you have faith in God? We want to know 
what this faith is today. So before we begin, I want us to just uh, quickly uh, remember and, and rewind a bit so that we look at what we learned last week and the week before. All right, the two weeks that have passed, the other week we learned about the love of God, all right, that a Christian should live a life of love. And then last week we were learning about obedience to the Word of God. When we love God, we are living in obedience. It makes a lot of sense because when we come to the topic of faith in God, all these things work together. So I hope that you are taking notes and you understood what you are learning and you haven't forgotten the things that you, you, you were taught by the other teachers. Okay? All right. So we are going to watch a video. But before we do that, I wanted to just ask this question. What is faith? You know, people talk about this issue of faith, but what is faith? Uh, faith, um, some people ask, uh, answer and say, well, faith is to believe. Yeah, 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 I do agree. Faith is believing in something, believing in someone. But really, what is to believe? Okay, you understand that to believe is to know that something is real and that it exists. So when someone believes and knows that something is real and that it exists, then they have faith. Then they have faith. So um, I would give an example of, uh, you know, like a country called Australia. Have you ever heard of a country called Australia? Does it exist? I mean, for me, I've never been there. I've never physically seen Australia as a country. But I believe, I have faith, I believe that it's, it's there. Why? Obviously because I've seen it on the map. I've also met people who have come from Australia. And so they'll tell you, oh, in Australia, in the summer season, in the hot season, it's very hot. You know, they're having fires, wildfires, and all those stories. So, you know, people have gone there and have come back. And so I believe that Australia exists. So it's the same way with this issue of faith. Faith is this belief that God is real and that God exists. But do we have to touch God or see God for us to believe? No. And I can give examples. There are so many things around us that we can't touch. We can't even see. But we believe and have faith that they are there. You know, the biggest example I can give is, for example, Wi-Fi. Most of you use Wi-Fi, you get your phone, you open, you, once you switch on your Wi-Fi, what you notice immediately is that uh, it will show you the uh, Wi-Fi's that are present. And so, uh, once you pick one, enter the correct password, you go in and you have access to the whole internet. You can watch YouTube, browse your videos and do all sorts of things. But have you ever seen Wi-Fi? No way. How do you believe, how do you have faith and know that Wi-Fi exists? Because you see what it can do. It's called evidence. It's also called proof. So today, as we look at this subject of uh, faith, I want you to know, child of God, where you are, that God is real and there is evidence, there is proof that he exists. And therefore you and me must believe in him. We shouldn't just be uh, hearing from people who say, no, I don't believe in God because I've never seen him. Yeah, there are many things that you don't see, including the brain that you're using to think. You don't see it, but you believe that it is there. Why? Because you see evidence or proof that that brain is there. So today, I want to encourage you as we begin to look at faith. Number one thing, child of God, where you're seated, you must know God is real. He exists. He's in heaven and he's here right now also because that's his nature. And because he's real, you and me must believe in him. We must have faith in him. All right. So uh, before we go further, I want us to pause for a moment and go and watch a video. It's a very nice video it's coming from the book of Daniel chapter 3, talking about very famous uh, Hebrew boys, three of them. I'm going to talk more about it uh, when we have uh, done. All right? Please don't go away. Watch. Stories of the Bible. The Fiery Furnace. 
There once were three Jewish men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey! When they were very young, they were taken from Israel to live in a place called Babylon. At that time, the king of Babylon was a man named Nebuchadnezzar. That's it. Almost there. And he made a gold statue that was 90 feet tall. Perfect. The king sent a message for everyone to come to the dedication of his statue. When everyone had assembled, <laughs> it was declared that people of all races, nations, and languages would bow before the statue and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's statue when they heard the sound of musical instruments. If anyone refused, they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people bowed to the ground and worshiped. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not because they were Jewish and would only bow to the one true God. <sighs> Some of the wise men of Babylon went to the king and told him that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow to the statue. What? This made the king very angry, and he asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if it was true that they would not bow to the statue. Then he said he would give them one more chance to bow down, and if they did not bow, they will be thrown into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied that they didn't need to defend themselves against the king. They said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Ah! The king was so angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that he commanded the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be bound and thrown in the fire. The fire was so hot that it killed the soldiers that threw them in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the flames. But suddenly, the king jumped up and said to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw him in the furnace? The advisor said, yes. But the king said, look, I see four men walking around the fire and the fourth looks like a god. Then the king shouted to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire and everyone saw that the fire had not touched them. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar praised the one true God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had rescued them from the fire. And the king made a new command that anyone who spoke a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would be greatly punished. Then he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in his court. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted in God and were willing to die rather than worship any god but their own god. All right, children, welcome back. I hope you really followed and you are watching and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Very, very nice video. You know that video is talking about uh, three Hebrew boys. I'm sure some of you know them. They are called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were friends of uh, a man called Daniel who wrote the book of Daniel. You know, in their time, as we saw, these guys believed God. They had faith in God. And you know, because of the fact that they believed God, it was very, very easy. You know, they had been taken from uh, uh, the, the land of Israel where they used to live and they were taken to another place called Babylon. They were like slaves, they were in a foreign country. But you know, the king decided to first of all train them, he isolated them and trained them, and they started to help their running of the affairs of the kingdom. So there was a king called Nebuchadnezzar who one day, you know, woke up with the advice of the other people and uh, said that, um, you know, we are going to have a statue. And when we have that statue, there's going to be a time, uh, several times during the day when music will be played. When that music is played, everyone must bow and worship that statue. 
And so, you know, when these three Hebrew boys heard about it, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were shocked. They were men of faith. They knew that there is a God who is real, who exists. This statue that Nebuchadnezzar built was simply something that is lifeless. It's called an idol. And so they knew they couldn't do it. And so obviously, as the story goes, when the music rang and everyone started to bow, they refused to bow. When they were taken to the king, they told the king, Oh king, for us, we believe in a real God. And this God you have created, you have made, this idol, we cannot bow to it. Then he says, oh, no, I'm going to throw you in the furnace. He says, yeah, even if you throw us in the furnace, all we know that we cannot worship another God. There is a real God. And even if you throw us there, we know that he's going to rescue us. But they said something even powerful. They said, even if God doesn't, re- our God doesn't rescue us from that furnace, we can still not worship this God that you have created very powerful. I like these young men, and they are young, uh, some of them as young as you who's watching. You must understand that having faith in God is about believing that He's real. He exists. He's seeing what you do. He's seeing what you think, and He knows all your thoughts and all your life. And because He knows it, we also understand that He's our Father. And because He's our Father, He will provide and protect us and give us everything that we need. So children, we must understand that. So uh, uh, the story is very interesting. We saw that eventually because they refused to bow, the king obviously told the soldiers to light that furnace seven times uh, more hotter than before. And you know, even the people were going to throw these three people, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the furnace, got burnt and died. That's how hot the place was. But you know what? As they were thrown there, the king looked and he saw a fourth man inside. He says, a one uh, who looked like a god. And that man came to rescue these ones. When they called them out to come out, they came out walking without anything touching them. Fire did not touch them. Their clothes were intact. Their hair were intact. That is a miracle, powerful working God that we serve. He's real. He exists. All right. So what are some of the lessons that we can learn from that story as we look at this subject of faith today? As a Christian, we must have faith. We are saying faith means you believe and you know that God is real and that he exists. So God is real. And number two, that he exists. This is faith. All right. So uh, already from Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, you see that there were people who were very obedient. Like we learned about obedience uh, last week. They were so obedient to their God that even when someone came and said, worship this other thing that I've created, they refused out of obedience. But you know what that obedience produced? The, pro- the, 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 the obedience that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had, you know, produced the faithfulness of God. There's a word called faithfulness. Faithfulness means God will come through when you call on him. No matter what problems you're going through as a child of God, God will come through. God will intervene. That's what this faith is. So these Hebrew boys were in trouble. I mean, they would have died. But because they had faith, they knew that this God can never let them. They knew that he's a faithful God. He's a God of faithfulness. So they trusted him. So we learn that God is faithful to those who obey all right. What else do we learn from this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with King Nebuchadnezzar and the statue that he built? We are learning that when we trust God and obey him, we must do it no matter the cost. When it comes to obeying God and trusting him, we must do it no matter the cost. There was a cost for, uh, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, they would have died. That should have been the cost. But they went ahead and obeyed God. That's faith. They went ahead and trusted in God. They can't see God. They have never seen God, but they trusted in Him. And because they trusted in Him, God protected them. It's the same thing for you and me today. Do you know that if we trust God, it doesn't matter what situation you may be going through. It could be at school. 
maybe there's something happening there, you know, teacher or at home, someone is sick or money, or there's no money or things like that. What is the situation? We must trust God. Even if it's a situation where there's danger, we must trust God. When we trust in God, he will show himself faithful. That's faith. All right? So God defends us when there's trouble. God also protects us. Those are the lessons that we are learning. All right? We also should know that sometimes God may get us out of the situation. Um, uh, Let me say that again. You know, God may not get us out of the situation. But at the end of the day, we must also, we must still trust in him. Our trust must never shake. There are people I know who, just because they've prayed, they've asked God for something, and they think it's a long time, is not coming through, so they say, no, he doesn't exist. They give up. They stop praying. Is that right? It won't work. God is always there. Yeah, sometimes it may take longer. Sometimes it may delay. But I want to assure you, our God is a faithful God. When we have faith in Him, He will trust. Uh, When we have faith in Him, He will come through. He will come through. All right? Um, I want us to read Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter 11. I'll read verse 1, and then I'll be able to skip and go to uh, verse 6. All right? The Bible there says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Uh, That's verse 1 and verse 2. Let's skip and go to verse 6. I hope you're following. Let's go to verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. This is a God that we serve, just like what we are talking about. First, God is saying that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And we must understand that it becomes impossible. You know, the word impossible cannot be done. God can never be pleased with you and me if we do not have faith. We have to believe, number one, that he is real, he exists, but also that he rewards those who faithfully put their confidence and trust in him. He rewards. I may have seen those rewards in my life. You know, there are many stories that I can tell. He rewards. Now, one thing, when we talk about this faith and rewarding, I want to just uh, talk about children, is that, you know, there are a lot of people I know who claim to have faith, And yet that faith is not theirs. What do I mean? The faith they have is probably because their parents go to church and they believe in Jesus. They also only believe because maybe their teacher believes or maybe their friend believes or their brother believes. It's very easy to have a faith like that. You know, a faith where you only believe because... eh? The, 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 your faith is in your parents probably. It's because, it's because your parents or people you are staying with, your guardians, are the ones who have uh, that faith. I want to talk to you. You need to have your own faith. Your own faith. Believe in God yourself. Know that he exists yourself. Know that he is real no matter the situation for yourself. Okay? Because if you don't, I can assure you, Satan will always bring things in your life. And you know, that's his, his specialty. That's what he loves to do. When someone says, I believe in God, he wants to bring things into their lives that will want to bring doubts so that people can start questioning whether God exists. Someone got sick and they've been praying and praying in six months. They want to give up and say, God doesn't exist. How come in six months he hasn't healed me? But I know people who stayed for two years. Uh, One man who stayed two years without, you know, without getting healed. But one day, when a simple prayer was being made, I mean simple, they just instantly got healed and woke up from that bed. God is able. 
It doesn't matter what time or how long it takes in that situation. God is able. Have your own faith. Okay? Have your own faith. Um, I want us to continue a bit with some of the lessons that we can learn from the story of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right? Another thing that is very important to remember is that in terms of trouble, God is always there. And this is why your faith and my faith must be in him. Trouble, problems, issues of life, things are not going right. You know, someone you knew has disappointed you or things like that. All those problems, we must have faith in our God because this God is real. He is real. He is real. He exists and he cares for you and me. He cares so much. You know he's our father? He's our father. And as a father, he cares. He wants you and me to, you know, know that he cares. That's why he's calling us to have a life of faith. Live a life of faith. Believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him those who are searching for him, those who want to be his children, he will reward them. He will show his faithfulness. He will come through. Okay? Another very important lesson that comes from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the fact that, um, you know, our faith, our strong faith in God can also lead others to Christ. You know, like what happened? After Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were so strong in their faith, they stayed to the very end. They could even see the fire. They even threw them there. But that fire did not hurt them. When they came out, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, proclaimed and said, from today onwards, the only God that must be worshipped is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Others came to, faith, to, 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 to the faith. Other people were led to, 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 to the true God because of their faith. So children, where you are, you must understand. When you, have, you are bold enough to exercise your faith, even in situations that are looking difficult and impossible, when God comes through because he's a faithful God, as we have said, when God comes through, others will start coming to Jesus. They will start coming to church. They will start coming and saying, ah, I want to see the God that this girl serves. I want to see the God that this boy serves. Because they can see that when you believe in this God, he also comes through. Okay? All right, another very, very important and, and very big lesson from this story that we just saw in that video is that, you know, there is nothing that is impossible with God. Nothing. You know, a lot of people like to limit God, you know, to limit God. It's like you put God in a box. You can only, like, he can only do this, he can't do this. God is not like that, children. Our God is a God who can do all things. In this case, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know what he did? A fire that was seven times hot did not touch them. Didn't touch them. Because he's an, a God of impossibilities. He covered them and protected them. I'm thinking that he was even probably putting fire, I mean, uh, putting away that fire or using some water, uh, invisible water that we cannot see. But God covered them and protected them. Not even a hair was bent. So he's a God who does the impossible. And this is why, for me, I, I have faith in this God because I know that I am talk, I'm, I'm talking about a God or I'm dealing with a God who is so big. He's so big. He's so big, this God, that nothing is impossible. Is it sickness? He will heal. Is it money that is needed? He will provide. You know, what is the need? You want friends? He will bring good friends, especially if you're those who want to get rid of friends that are, uh, are, are doing bad things. God will provide. Let's not limit God. Okay, children? Now, I want to ask a question. How does faith come? How can I receive faith so that I also have faith like these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells us the answer in a very nice way. You know, it says, faith comes by hearing 
with our ears. Faith comes by hearing, and that hearing by the word of God. We cannot have faith if we do not believe in a God. But to believe in this God, we must read what the Bible says because God tells us to do things in his word. God tells us what not to do in his word, okay? So we must believe in this God. We must believe in this God, have faith in God, all right? Faith comes by hearing. All right, another question I had was to ask, can a child of God please the Father? Can a child of God please God the Father? Is it possible to please? We have just read something very powerful from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You know, there are very few impossibilities with God, but here it's where it becomes impossible. It is impossible to please God if we do not have faith, if we do not believe in Him, if our hearts do not trust in Him, if our hearts do not have confidence in God, we cannot believe God. So there is something that becomes impossible here. It becomes impossible to please the Father. Now, how many of you want to live a life where you do not please the Father? Mm, that's very dangerous. All of us want to please God, don't we? I want to please God. I want everything I do to please God. I want everything I think to please God. I want all my life to be something that pleases God. So I want to encourage you. Have faith. Know He is real. Know He, God, exists. All right? So let's go to the question that I want to just uh, look at and then we'll be finishing our session today. What can I do in order to have faith and trust God more? In case you are at a place where you're thinking, okay, I want to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want to have faith in God. I want to please God. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, what can I do? The number one thing that you have to do in order to please God or to start on your journey of pleasing God is first of all, start by making Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. You know, when you invite him into your life to say, Lord, I do not want to live my own life. I do not want to be making my own decisions and going places and doing things, watching things and, 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 and even spending time with friends just anyhow. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to direct me, guide me, and lead me in the path of righteousness or a path of Christianity. You must make Jesus your Lord and Savior. So, have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? This thing we're talking about of having faith in God will not happen if Jesus is not Lord over your life. Today, at the end, I want to invite you. If you haven't done that, you need to invite Jesus into your heart, all right? Another very important thing, if you're asking, what can I do for me to have faith and to please God more? Read His Word. This is a solution. I know some people say, no, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. It's one thing to say I'm a Christian, but how much of the Word of God do you know? You're even struggling to just tell us John 3.16. You need to read and to memorize the Word of God. Those things can never be separated from Christians. A Christian must read. Why should we read? Because when we read, it produces faith. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith will come when we hear the Word of God. Are you hearing the Word of God? Are you reading the Word of God? Are you memorizing the Word of God? child of God. If you are doing it, then you become a God pleaser. God is pleased. But if you are not doing it, God is not happy. And so today, I want to ask you to put your trust in Jesus. Now, if you are there and you're saying, Uncle P, I have not uh, uh, received Jesus as Lord and my Savior. I want to have faith. I want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to know him and so that he makes me my friend. I want us to bow down. Where you are, close your eyes and pray this prayer after me. And when we pray this prayer, 
I can assure you, Jesus Christ will come into your heart. He will be your Lord. He will be your friend. And when he becomes your friend, you know what happens? You start to live a life of faith. Okay. All right. So uh, if you want to receive Jesus, close your eyes and uh, pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross of Calvary and for taking away all my sins. I want to know you more. I want to live a life of faith. I want to learn to trust in you. Therefore, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me from all my sins. Wash me and make me your friend. And may I be part of the kingdom. Today, I invite Jesus into my heart that forever I'll be your friend. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I also want to pray for those who have received Jesus already, but you're saying my faith is not like that of Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego. My faith is not strong. I want to just pray for you. Uh, close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone, Lord, who does not, uh, who, who, who's saying they want to increase their faith. They want to know you more and better. I pray that, Lord, may you touch them by your Holy Spirit. Help them to learn the habit of reading and studying your word daily so that they increase and grow their faith. Bless them and touch them. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Protect them from the work of the devil who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for them and ask that lift them to a higher level. May their faith grow in Jesus' mighty name. All right, children. Our memory verse for the day is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And remember that. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and evidence about what we do not see. And so that's what you need to memorize and uh, next time recite that. All right, children, thank you so much for all those who have prayed with us. I may God bless you and be with you. Thank you for uh, staying with us and for listening. From me, Uncle P, I'll say God bless you and see you next time. Bye. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to today's quiz. I hope you're ready and I hope you remembered today's story because that's where the questions will be coming from. Question number one. What were the names of the Israelite boys that refused to worship the king of Babylon? You have three seconds to respond. Absolutely right. That was Shadrach, that was Meshach, and Abednego. Let's move on to the next question, which is, what was the name of the king of Babylon? What was the name of the king of Babylon? Absolutely right. It was a difficult name, but you got it. It was King Nebuchadnezzar. Let's move on to question number three. What did the king of Babylon want Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to do? What did he want them to do? Yes, the king of Babylon wanted uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship a statue. Mm, but they say no. Okay, let's move on to the fourth question, you guys. You're doing really great. I'm so glad that we are on the same track. Okay, question number four. What did the king of Babylon see when he put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace? What did he see? Yeah, you've got it. He saw the fourth person in the fire, and that was Jesus. Jesus came, and he was the fourth person in the fire. Let's go to our final question. You guys are amazing, okay? So the, fourth, the fifth question is, what is the lesson learned out of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Wow, you guys, those are amazing answers. And I have an answer too. What I've learned is that I should have faith in God and trust Him always. And I should worship Him all the time. All right, you guys, stay tuned for... To, uh, mm -hmm. All right, boys and girls, because you did so amazing in the quiz, I have a home assignment for you. Okay, just pay attention. All right, boys and girls, your home assignment is to make a list of things that you're trusting God for and also ask him to help you grow your faith. 
Until next time, join us on our Sunday School online service. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.